Hey guys, what's up? This is With The Tech, and if you believe it or not, Google can actually do something besides having its next flagship phone get leaked all over the internet. So recently, Google has confirmed that its next product, the Pixel Watch, has been delayed and it isn't coming out this year. Now, this is a relatively benign subject. You might go, oh, okay, it probably isn't ready for prime time yet. But I think there's something more important behind this statement. There's a reason why they came out and made a public statement about it in a very definitive manner. And this isn't for consumers, but instead, this is for its industry partners. So Android Wear, or the now rebranded Wear OS, is going to be the new footprint for all future Android-based operating systems that you can wear. Just fairly recently, too, from IFA 2018, there was a nice new lineup of smartwatches coming out, donning the new operating system from the likes of Casio, Skagen, and Diesel, which is refreshing since Apple still has a colossal 34% of the wearables market share. So let's get back to the main point. Why did Google come out to tell everyone that there's going to be no Pixel Watch this year when it would have been the perfect companion for the Pixel 3? And this is something we can't talk about without drawing comparisons to Microsoft. Like Microsoft, Google started off as predominantly a software company, but later down the road, they started experimenting into hardware because they've already accomplished what they could in the software aspects of things. And if you look at what Microsoft's doing now with hardware, they're definitely doing better than they used to. The Surface line of products seems to be doing well and is actually captivating people's imaginations, and they just look better. If you compared it to their foray with the Windows phone, that wasn't as successful. But originally, unlike Microsoft, Google first went into the hardware business by partnering with Motorola, not to actually compete toe to toe with the likes of Samsung or LG, but instead to show off what stock Android could be like at its full potential. With all the bloatware taken away, you have some pretty interesting phones like the Nexus 6P or some tablets too. And at the time, people ended up really liking it too. That's where the whole fad, or at least not the fad, that's when the whole craze over stock Android really began. Because at that moment in time in consumer tech, OEMs were hellishly slow in updating their devices to the newest version of Android, or even pushing out security patches. And of course, that's a huge contrast to today, where companies like OnePlus has been able to update its version of Android in less than 45 days. And this fragmentation is also an issue with app developers. As the Android market gets increasingly splintered, it becomes exponentially harder for developers to develop well-optimized apps. So when Google actually stepped out of the mid-tier market and abandoned the Nexus line, which was pretty much to me just reference devices anyways, they started their ascent into the flagship category with its own dedicated hardware division. And then, so came the Pixel phone. Google's Pixel phones were promised to be the first in line for Android updates for, I think, three-ish years guaranteed. And it was given the marketing line made by Google to show that they're betting their reputation behind this device. And I don't think people understand just how important that is. And even though the phone doesn't sell as well as the iPhone or the Galaxy line of phones, it was considered as a broadside shot across the bowels of Google's own manufacturing partners, like Samsung. LG or Sony. Suddenly the companies that Google was depending on, on spreading Android across the world, became competitors overnight. And honestly, from a business perspective, if you were an executive at LG or Sony, Samsung's doing fine, you'd be wondering, so I have to deal with Apple in the flagship market, and then I have to deal with Samsung in the mid-tier to a high mid-tier market, now I have to deal with Google going up as well. We don't know where their phone pricing is going to be. That's three new devices they have to worry about. And a lot of these companies, their mobile division, they aren't making money at all. Now, I didn't mention Samsung, and that was actually really important because they don't see Google as much as some other companies would. Samsung, as a company, actually has the human resources, capital, and R&D budget in order to push and pioneer their own operating system for their phones, tablets, and devices. It's important to note that they already built their own chipset, the Exynos series. Now, at the moment, it's not as good as Apple's A series of chips, but they have shown real dramatic improvements over the years. And it's only about time before they start implementing globally instead of just certain markets. Also, I think some people forget this, but Samsung actually does have its own operating system up its sleeve, Tizen. It's primarily used for the Galaxy Gear line of watches, but fun fact, it's also used for refrigerators, washing machines, air conditioners, and robotic vacuums. So let's put this on the context. Tizen at least doesn't have or it has a very, very low chance of becoming a strong competitor to Android at the moment, especially on the global scene. Everyone uses Android. That's because it's free and open source, and you can customize it to any way you want when you ship it to your consumers. Tizen doesn't have that kind of freedom yet, or at least Samsung hasn't decided to give it that amount of freedom yet. At the moment, Android enjoys a huge structural advantage by just being there first and being good enough. Some people say really good, but I'd say good enough, where you don't really need to replace it. 
yet. But in the relatively new segment, such as wearables, that involves more than just smartwatches, by the way, it also involves necklaces, earbuds, or augmented reality lenswear, Tizen has a real potential to expand to that segment in particular, especially if Google shows too much bad faith towards its OEMs. And that right there is the crux of it all. Google is walking a very thin line where if you push too hard of their pixel line um, in wearables, you could have real alienation with its partners. And then if you push too little, the partners will grow really well, which is also a little win for Google as well. But then the pixel watch doesn't really stand a chance. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video because this is something really fun for me to research on and compile together. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to give a thumbs up down below and subscribe to see more future videos. And go ahead and give me your thoughts. Are you interested in a Pixel Watch? I don't really think the wearable market is that competitive anymore because anyone who wants a wearable most likely has an iPhone and they're gonna get a Apple Watch. And let me know if you wanna see more videos like this explaining decisions of certain companies or entities in general. All right, see you in the next one. Peace.